there. Uh, I don't even know who I am today. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm Sandra. Maybe Sandy. Uh, yeah, I had a little bit of a disastrous day, so uh, all the, all today's planning for the show has got it's gone to pot. But uh, I managed to whip on a quick, uh, nice top, and uh, a lovely wig. This was a Christmas present. This is my best Christmas present. Sorry, all the other people that gave me Christmas presents. Santa, sorry, but this was the best one because. It was a, this is a real wig. I mean, all my wigs are real, but this is a real proper wig, not just a, a fun wig. This is a proper wig for one of my pupils who, when she had cancer and she, all her hair fell out. And thankfully that was a long time ago and her hair's grown back and she doesn't have the cancer anymore. But she gave me this wig for my show because she thought I would suit it. And look, I do. It's a little bit Jennifer Aniston, isn't it? Or uh, who, who's the guy from Wayne's World? That was a long time ago, maybe don't remember that. Anyway, yeah, I like the Jennifer Aniston look. Anyway, I didn't have time to put on the high heels and the lipstick, but hey, best I could do under the circumstances. Uh, yes, yeah, so I had a rather disastrous day because I was supposed to fly to Sweden tomorrow and to go to Sweden since about a couple of weeks ago, you have to now get a PCR test and uh, fit to fly. And what turns out, I wasn't fit to fly because it came back positive. Uh, although I don't think I've got the virus, I think it's just the remnants from a couple of months ago. Apparently I shouldn't have taken a PCR because I had the virus a couple of months ago. So it's all very confusing. Anyway, there's no way I'm allowed to fly to Sweden tomorrow, so that's not happening. And uh, I've been frantically messaging lots of people. Anyway, that's enough about my problems. Hey, we're all in the same pandemic. <laughs> We've all got problems. Welcome to tonight's show. Uh, fly from the heart of Edinburgh. Fly from my heart to your heart. It's not a pig's heart, it's, it's just a normal human heart, but hey, if that, if that pig's heart was being offered and I needed it, I would take it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that, that topical, that's the news yesterday, the guy in America has been the first successful pig heart transplant. Uh, poor pig though, you gotta feel, you got to feel for the pig, it's probably not doing so well. Uh, <laughs> speaking, speaking of piggies, I didn't, I didn't even know what I was going to play tonight. I think I will start with the price of a pig. <laughs> Ah, the price of a pig. I watch for its heart. jigs there. Uh, speaking of jigs, I was going to play some of just some of my own music tonight, some of the uh, stuff from my albums Out of His Box and Out of His Tree, still modern classics. Uh, and we're going to start with a, a set called Buckfast at Tiffany's, for all those people that drink the wonderful Scottish, Scot Scotland's other, other national drink, Scotland's national drink is whiskey, Scotland's other national drink, according to advertising, it's Iron Brew, Blanc. I'm not a particular fan of it, I can drink it and I'm forced to. It's, it's alright, I mean it's nice, it's just it's not what I would normally drink. Um, 
But anyway, it's very good and very famous. Helps make Scotland famous all over the world, the old iron brew, good stuff. And then there's Scotland's other, other national drink, which is Buckfast, which is what the teenagers drink uh, when they're trying to get to hold of alcohol before they're legally old enough. Because uh, it's very strong, you see, and it's dark violet. It's dark violet. It's violent colours. It is very violent because it makes people do violent things. Apparently the most commonly used weapon in an assault in the Strathclyde region, that's the area around Glasgow for those of you from foreign climes, it's apparently the most common used, commonly used weapon is an empty Buckfast bottle, because you wouldn't use a full one, would you? No, that would be a waste. Yeah, they drink it and go, ah, hit somebody over the heat of the bottle. So, uh, I wrote a tune for all those charming Buckfast drinkers out there who drink it all day and all night and have it again for breakfast. Breakfast? Breakfast the next morning. It's called Buckfast Titties. Yeah, if you've never tried Buckfast, I go down, get down to your local newsagent and give it a go. <laughs> it's usually in the shelf just behind the guy serving at the counter. <laughs> Delicious drink. Uh, I've never been a fan of Buckfast. That's so it was made in Buckfast Abbey down in Devon, and um, the monks make quite a lot of money out of it for all in, all for the Lord's work, of course. Um, although the people who drink it aren't necessarily doing the Lord's work, I would imagine. But that's the way of the world, isn't it? Uh, anyway, um, big business making Buckfast shipped all over the world. But yes, as I said, Strathclyde, where it's also. Buckfast bottle is also the most commonly used weapon in an assault. Uh, it's also, Strathclyde is also the region that imports, all the way from the foreign country of England, imports more um, Buckfast than anywhere else in the world. So there could be a link, could be a link. Um, we shall investigate. Now there's a couple of tunes that uh, I want to play for you next. Uh, marches I wrote uh, called Hanging Out the Windows. And it's followed by Smoke in the Air, which I co-wrote with my uh, long-term 
uh, fiddle playing chum Gavin Mark, uh, who, who now resides down in Dumfries and Galloway in the southwest of Scotland. Beautiful part of the country, if a little desolate. I mean remote. Uh, and uh, lovely tune, lovely tune. Uh, the half hour of it's lovely anyway. Uh, it goes like this. <laughs> story about this before but I was hanging out the windows of a top floor flat in Edinburgh many years ago in order to have a puff of a cigarette terrible habit stopped years ago very smug about it now nice and healthy <clears throat> just I stopped just in time for the pandemic yeah you don't want to be a smoker in these times of respiratory viruses do you uh, anyway uh, back when I was a silly youth I was smoking out this top floor flat window in Edinburgh and uh, it was very windy and so the smoke was coming into the flat and we were told to lean further out the window, me and Gavin Marwick, aforementioned fiddle player, and uh, we were leaning out and as I leaned out the further I slipped and, uh, and I was just caught by the ankles, uh, saved by Gavin Marwick and I was hanging there by my ankles dangling with a cigarette still in my hand going, ah this is dangerous with the ground 50 feet below me. So I realised what a uh, silly and 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 perilous pastime smoking was I gave up. Uh, so sometimes you need a little shock like that don't you just to get a little prod in the right direction. Maybe that's the story of hanging out the windows and smoking the air. Every, every tune's got a little story when it comes to my tunes. Uh, now speaking of little stories, this I was up in Sky yesterday, yes, seems like ages ago but it was only yesterday, 
uh, lovely, lovely place, lovely island. I like to just pop in, you know, for for a out of the shops, I just lift up the sky uh, while I'm out. It's only a couple hundred miles from here in Edinburgh, and a uh, uh, wonderful place to uh, to get a, a bit of uh, lovely scenery. Rain, in particular, is one of the most popular scenery bits that you get up there. The mountains, if you can see them beyond behind the rain and mist. Uh, yes, Island of Island of Mist, that isn't it? Uh, Island and Hue, Hue, in the Gaelic. Uh, Isle of Mist. So what we're going to do is play a set of tunes that I composed after a wonderful trip to the sky many years ago when we were up in Edin Bain, which is in the far northwest, a tiny place. We are playing in the Edin Bain Hotel, a wonderful place. Bill Hall, McDonald, used to run it in those days. Quite a character, quite a character. Uh, anyway, here, here it is, it's called the Sky Stramash. <laughs> Thank 
Whoa, tricky set. I played that outrageous. Only my Jennifer Aniston hair got me through it. Whoa, thank goodness I was wearing her hair. Uh, oh, I like this, might just keep it on all the time. Uh, every day I got a little bit less and less hair looking in the mirror, so it's about time to start wearing a wig off off, off air as well as on air, <laughs> I think. Yes, uh, oh, yeah, now these glasses, by the way, these are real glasses, which is very, it's very hard to read any of the messages on the screen there. Hello, people that are saying hello there. Joyce Dalrymple, hello there. Lovely to see you again, Joyce. Well, I can't actually see you. I've never seen you. You, you see me. I see your messages, so that's the important thing. Yeah, but it's very hard to read with the glasses on because these are for distance. You see, these are actually my real glasses. Um, just thought they went with the Jennifer Aniston wig, you know, for the mature lady look. And, uh, yes, well, well uh, funnily enough, um, I've had problems with my eyes recently. I keep getting this thing, iritis. It sounds like a joke, but it's not. It's, it's, uh, sometimes I get it in the eye left this as well, but it's not, it, it's actually, well, that's eye left this, yes, this is eye right this. It's all flipped around in Facebook. Anyway, yes, one of my eyes is, I keep getting an infection, and it's uveitis, it's also called. It's a real thing, you can Google it. And, um, yeah, you have to, it's an, it's the, the coloured bit of the eye, the, the iris, becomes sticky and it doesn't contract and um, dilate like it should. Uh, when you know you've got bright light, it contracts to stop your eyes getting hurt so it gets very painful if you're in bright lights and that and the bright i'm in the bright lights all the time and on stage it's very difficult so the what they give you is um just raking my pocket there they give you maxi dex which is oops there is maxi dex which is uh steroid steroid drops i will put one in live on tv for you just so you can see how how this happens and uh well you know about you know about steroids, of course. That's what that's what uh, all the weightlifters take illegally, I think, to um, pump up, pump up the volume, to pump up the muscles. So uh, I'll probably end up with this massive, muscly uh, left eye, a little tiny normal right eye. Uh, anyway, it keeps the infection at bay. But I got that many years ago from a tick bite. So be careful with your ticks when you're up in the Highlands. The, the these monsters, these horrible things. You find them. Uh, you find them clinging on to all the most unsavoury bits of your body, I can tell you. In the past, very embarrassing when you can't reach it and you have to get a, a friend or a family member to tweezer them off from a, a difficult to reach area. <laughs> oh yes, I've had that, I've had that. Anyway, the one that gave me the, the one that gave me iritis was, uh, was on my belly button. Woke up on my 35th birthday, uh, on the morning of my 35th birthday in a B&B &B in Mull, having been playing there the night before. I remember it as if it was yesterday, even though it was almost 20 years ago. And uh, yes, there was this, uh, and I went, yeah, it's my birthday. And I looked down and saw this giant tick that was sucking the blood out of my rather weird, uh, outy belly button. And uh, yeah, oh, it was horrible. Uh, anyway, that gave me iritis as well, but uh, I got off pretty mildly, considering all the things you can get from Lyme's disease, which is what it was. Anyway, that's enough about me, it's enough about me. Let's do another one of my tunes, so yes. <laughs> Uh, speaking of strange creatures, this is all about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They are very strange creatures with carapaces, yes. Shells, shells, I hear you say. Uh, and they are, um, they're not really my favourite thing, but it was the, one of the most interesting cocktails I've ever had in my life was named after them. It's called Green Mutant Ninja Turtle Blood. And uh, I asked the barman what's in it and he said, everything. And I went, oh, that's, that sounds nice, I'll try that. And I did, and it was very, it was very entertaining. I can't remember very much, but I was, I was the colour of a turtle the next morning when I woke up and remembered everything that was in it. It was kind of green. Anyway, here we go.
Turtle blood. I'm speaking of strange creatures. I have to. I must apologise for the accidental positioning of these two doggies here. It looks incredibly rude, but actually it's just a, an error of the, the the parallax. Is that the right word? Now look, look. That dog is actually behind. It's far away. This doggy is actually close, but just the way the way that we were aligned there. Yeah, looks a little bit naughty. Never mind. That's what doggies do. <laughs> yeah, doggies love doing that kind of thing, don't they? Sometimes it gets your leg very embarrassing if you're visiting a friend's house and the doggy starts rubbing itself up against your leg. Actually, I was sitting on the couch once in um, Orkney and Stephen and Donna Heddle's dog, a little Pomerian, a cheeky little Pomerian, started to have sex with my elbow. It was very, very embarrassing. Would not stop, would not let go. Very hard to stop these little things when they get going. A lot of energy in these little doggies. Anyway, uh, we're going to play some more tunes now, uh, and this one is called It's Accordion Music Gym, but not as we know it. Oh, yeah, this is for William Shatner, the first man to really go into space. I bet he found it a little bit pokey inside that little capsule, though, when he's used to being in the giant Starship Enterprise when he's, when he's jogging around space. He was just instead he was in Elon Musk's Musk, little tiny little capsule, but hey, it's the best he could do. Uh, what was I going to play? Uh, I've forgotten already. Oh yeah, it's a music gym, but not as we know it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
music, Jim, but not as we know it. That was a couple of tunes composed by myself, The Sloppy Bellows and The Masochist's Waltz. It wasn't even a waltz. Uh, the first one was a tune by the great Irish fiddler Tommy Peoples, one of many tunes called Tommy Peoples, uh, named after the composer, Tommy Peoples, just in case you didn't catch that great tune. Um, oh, I was going to play something slow for you. Yeah, so it's supposed to be in Sweden tomorrow. That's not going to happen. Uh, now, thanks to my positive PCR, bomber. Uh, never mind. So, got to look on the bright side. Here's a set of Scandinavian tunes that I wrote for a lovely woman that I met briefly only once at the Scandinavian Airlines Services Desk in uh, Copenhagen, it was. Not quite Sweden, but very close, very similar. Uh, the Danes wouldn't, the Swedes probably wouldn't have pushed me saying that, but Norway, Denmark, Sweden, it's all very similar. They, they, they all speak basically the same language, it's just very hard to understand each other because they, 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 they pronounce it so differently. But, and there's a few different words as well, yeah, but anyway, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, anyway, the, the prices are different. Denmark is definitely cheaper than Sweden. In fact, why am I going to Sweden all the time? I should be going to Denmark, it's much cheaper. Uh, anyway, I missed a flight once, and uh, well, it's not the first time. Uh, I missed my flight tomorrow, but at least it's not my fault this time. Well, it is, I suppose, for catching the virus. Uh, but uh, the last time I missed a flight uh, in Scandin Scandinavia was uh, in Copenhagen. I forgot, that I forgot to set the clock an hour ahead or back or something. Easily done. Easily done when you're in the bar. I'm distracted. <laughs> the airport bar. And uh, I missed my flight, and uh, a lovely woman called Kate Jurgensen, um, as her name badge said, uh, got me another flight the next day and didn't charge me any extra money for it, which was good because I was a poor itinerant uh, musician at the time. What's the word for somebody that, peripatetic, I was a pathetic, peripatetic musician at the time. And uh, <coughs> I'm asking, oh, so I, she doesn't know this, but I wrote a tune for her when I got home. I still never met her again, that was 30 years ago. Who knows, one day I dream of meeting Kate Jorgensen in an airport lounge and again I'll go, Kate, Kate, I wrote this tune for you. And she'll pick up the phone and go, Hello, police help!
Time and Kate Jorgensen's Waltz. I was actually two tunes, two tunes combined into one there. Uh, well, the uh, the show is rocking along at an incredible rate here. We've only got five minutes left, so probably only time for one more set. And I've saved the the best for last, or is it the worst? I don't know. It's uh, it used to be my sort of party piece, although I got a bit tired of it. Uh, but I still play it now and again. So I'm going to play it for you as my big outro number. It's called the Canny Repair. And uh, it's all about repairing and exhausting a car using a can of a can of Coca-Cola. And uh, the car was being driven by uh, Geordie Northumbrian Piper, Graham Dixon. So it was a canny, a canny repair, lad. Yes. And uh, it's followed by a tune uh, called The Dwarf, which is... Uh, well, there wasn't a dwarf in the car. It's nothing to do with that, really, but it just kind of worked for the first tune. Anyway, here we go. Let's put the glasses back on for no particular reason and they make me look much more educated than I really am. The kind of repair. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
To mention, I've already I put up on the uh, link somewhere there. Um, oh, there's a PayPal link if any of you feel like sending me some shekels from wherever you are in the world. Yes, we're still in this kind of lockdown here in Scotland. Uh, well, I, I can't even keep track of which one is five or six, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yes, all the gigs were cancelled. Uh, well, I did manage to do a Hogman A gig actually, but uh, it, was a, it was a last minute one. The two uh, that I did have were cancelled, and then I got a last minute one two days before up in Inverness, so that, that was good. But um, yeah, no, no Burns gigs or anything like that this year again. It's a bit of a shame. Never mind. Uh, <coughs> but there's also a link there for a new CD. Which uh, do I have one handy? Oh, yes, there is one there. It's got lots of for for planning goes into the show. It's here. It's here. It's um, try not get there. There we go. Not get the reflection. Lechile, which means I know it's backwards. Don't. Don't send me annoying messages. I guess I know it's backwards. I can't do anything about it. Yeah, it means together in Gaelic Lechele. And that is me, that one there. That's what it looked like without the wig. And that is Brino, Brino Heed the Ball, Brino O'Hara, and Charlie McCarran. <clears throat> and together we are Karen Brickin O'Hara. Just trips off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, it's our new album, Lechele. Did a Kickstarter project for it. Very successful. Now it's officially out. If you want to buy it, follow the link. I'll send you one in the post. From my, my little TV factory here in Edinburgh. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Um, it's quite fast. I've got, oh, squeeze in one very quick, tiny, fast little tune to finish then. Uh, what should we do? for watching goodbye for music from Scotland land 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 and yeah wow another great show hey little stormtrooper what do you think of the today's show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the force is strong in this one yes you're right the force was strong in my left elbow today and uh, what else did you think not much else. Well, okay, that's well, thank you. At least it was positive. It's good to be positive. Oh, is that still on? Oh no, I can't believe it. I've left it on again.